looks to the to the right. <sighs> Got it. These instructional videos on YouTube are awesome. Oh, this is about stage builder. Maybe when Animal Crossing comes out, I can teach us how to tie a tie. If you haven't been able to tell yet, based on the monitor, we're gonna be checking out the Dreamcast today. Now, the Dreamcast is a system that a lot of people have very fond memories of, myself included, to a degree. It kind of came in at the end. Like, I, I got the Dreamcast right when it was going away. Now, the Dreamcast, of course, was Sega's last home console, and it sounds like they're gonna be making a new system, kind of, with the plug-and-play Genesis Mini this fall. And that'll be interesting to see them technically show back up in the console generation, to a degree. Now, we're gonna be checking out the Dreamcast today because I wanted to bring it up to spec, up to current times. And in order to do that, we're gonna have to make sure we're gonna hook up to my monitor here, just in case I wanna capture footage down the road. So that's gonna be our job today. Now the Sega Dreamcast was a system that was just flat out ahead of its time. The weird memory cards with the screens, the accessories that included a keyboard, a game called Seaman. The system had all the quirks you could possibly jam into one console generation. I mean, it even came with a modem by default, which at the time we only knew was the thing next to the computer that made this noise. So somehow in the meeting room, despite us knowing dial up as that sound, Sega said, well, we, we need all of that in the Dreamcast, so eh, we got our modem. I actually got my Dreamcast for the first time during the Christmas of 2000, and the system was promptly discontinued a month later in January 2001. While I liked the Dreamcast at the time, it was frustrating to see my newest toy at the time get shut down immediately after I got one. But then I saw the Xbox, and uh, yeah, I was over it then. But now that the Dreamcast is showing its age as it comes up on its 20th anniversary, <clears throat> I said it's 20th anniversary. Oh good, it's almost time for my midlife crisis. The thing about the Dreamcast and other retro game consoles that makes it hard to use with current displays is the lack of an HDMI port. Now, I already did a conversion for the N64 and it turned out great, so when I heard about a similar method to get HDMI from the Dreamcast, I was all over it. The idea here is we're going to outright bypass the standard connection on the back of the Dreamcast, where we would normally plug in AV cables and install our own HDMI port. This port will sit on its own board that will handle converting the display to work on a current monitor or flat screen TV. In order to get the signal, we're gonna have to go to the source and solder directly to the chips on the main board that provide both video and sound. Now, a fair warning before we start, this is definitely not for the faint of heart. Seriously, it's not an easy job to do. The board itself that you have to order to solder in to get HDMI out of this thing is $150. You also have to cut a hole in the back of your Dreamcast. Keep that in mind, so you're gonna do some damage to the system itself. And of course, you risk your entire Dreamcast. We're soldering straight to the board. We're also removing resistors. There's a lot of stuff that can go wrong that will affect your system. And of course, your $150 minimum, $150 investment so keep all of that in mind there are services you can get done where you pay i think it's like 70 dollars or so and someone else will solder it all into your system for you as long as i believe you provide the board of course and a dreamcast so if you're not really sure about going this far with it and you still want one look into those services before you get your soldering iron out and start touching things with it in this system to start we'll be installing a dc hdmi this little board will be what gives us a sharp 1080p image that can allow a perfect aspect ratio for our widescreen display installing this is fairly difficult and if you're not extremely confident in your soldering abilities i would recommend looking up one of the verified installation services that are offered i can see this being messed up very easily by even a person with expert soldering skills simply due to the amount of cutting, placement, and alignment for all of the points on the ribbon cable. Factor in potential shorts or bridge connections, you have a minefield of potential issues. I was able to install my cable and after some testing and cleanup, I had a clean and working connection. We mainly targeted two different chips for our signal. Both the video and audio chips on the Dreamcast main board are tapped into, as you see in this picture here. We can also solder a few extra wires to the underside of the board that will allow us to reset the Dreamcast from the built-in menu. I also opted to remove the disk drive and install a GD Emu in its place. This is a really cool internal modification that will allow you to boot game backups from an SD card. It basically tricks the system into thinking it's booting up a startup disk and it then launches a menu to access your stored games. No more loud disk drive noise is a massive plus. One of the coolest things about this modification that's not really explained as well 
in like the documentation, it has Wi-Fi. It actually adds a Wi-Fi antenna to your Dreamcast, and that way, if your board inside wants to update, which it can, it can update firmware straight up, it'll actually call to your router and get the update itself from the internet. It is awesome. It was one of the weirdest things, by the way, to pull up the menu, search for a firmware update for the board from your Dreamcast, and then it fills up the bar. It's like, oh, we found your SSID for your router. You gotta put your password in. It was super weird, but it was awesome all at the same time. And it downloaded pretty quick. I don't think the file is very big. It's probably like a text file or something that uh, basically has its firmware written, but it's still really, really cool to see that. I mean, it's a downloading bar. It was a little thing since, I mean, really haven't been online with our Dreamcast in a long time. Instead, having your Dreamcast see your Wi-Fi. It's really neat. So now the question is, how does it look running through HDMI and upscale? Well, the results are amazing in person, and while I would like to show you a comparison shot of AV versus HDMI, to be honest, I've always had a hard time capturing this footage from the Dreamcast through AV with my Elgato. In fact, even getting it to recognize the signal has been very difficult, which is one of the reasons that I wanted to do this project in the first place, so I could actually capture footage from a Dreamcast. Now, the closest I've ever been able to get to capturing Dreamcast footage through AV, it was with a cheap AV to USB adapter and it would constantly cut out at the menu. I'm showing you captured HDMI footage here from the Dreamcast for Sonic, but if you would like a very thorough analysis of how the HDMI looks when compared to AV, I left a link in the description to John Linneman's video on the hardware, and there are a ton of side-by-sides there for you. So with that in mind, how about we actually hang out and play some of these games and take a tour of the menu system. All right, so playing this Dreamcast on my monitor here looks amazing. Everything is so sharp, text especially. Some of the in-game models uh, are very sharp to the point where you can see a lot of the aliasing around it. Back then, which I'll show you, uh, like Jack Ryan Radio, I noticed it heavily for. But back then, we relied on the like CRT TVs, like the old school TVs, tube TVs, uh, to kind of hide some of that because it would basically, because the resolution was so low already on them, it would basically soften the image to where we wouldn't be able to notice them. But now, of course, we're working with like 4K and everything. So even like 1080p, you'll see a lot of the, the jagged edges around stuff, but like text through the Dreamcast looks super clean. Like it is insane how clean some of the text looks in, in, in these games. Uh, so we have a bunch of different games here. I showed you some of Sonic Adventure already. Uh, so let's check out some of their other big ones. One a lot of people wanted me to check out was Crazy Taxi, which we can do. I'll probably have to uh, basically get rid of, the, I guess, the music and stuff in the background for this game because, of course, I had, like, Offspring and some licensed music. Uh, so we don't get absolutely copyright struck by them. But we can play some of it here and... Crazy Taxi is one of my favorite games on the Dreamcast. A lot of people love this game. It's just stupid fun. So because I'm also loading from the SD card, it does load pretty quick as well, right? Like, look at the, sh like the sharpness on that Sega logo. It's crazy. Uh, very bright because of the, the modification and everything. It looks, like, super vivid here. Uh, I can also show you some of the back menu as well, the menu uh, system. Let me go in here to options so I can kind of... There we go. So I, uh, I can pull it up here and... It's still, you can see the background still works because the menu overlays and it's kind of grabbing, hijacking some of the controls here for it to work. They use R and L as select and exit because, of course, those aren't used as much in like a menu like this or the Dreamcast main menu. But you can do a lot of stuff from here. You can change the output resolution, um, which oh, I used a, which I actually have at 1080p. P right now you can do 960p 480p or VGA it will also force uh you can actually uh force VGA on pretty much every game it will attempt to do it and that helps of course make it look much better because if you don't it'll actually still try to put out an interlaced image through here and it is noticeable whereas if you force VGA for a lot of them it will come off looking much better and cleaner which is really cool uh, you have a firmware upgrade of course where you can upgrade the firmware on the board it will do it itself Wi-Fi setup like I said where it will track down your Wi-Fi you punch in your SSID it'll go find it and it will use it to download any firmware updates that happen which they seem to keep happening fairly frequently so if you get this board you do want to update it right away uh, scan lines, you can add scan lines if you would like, uh, on and off. There's just a lot of really cool options here, so you can just drop them right on like that. 
which is cool. Uh, change intensity, odd even thickness, and everything of those scan lines. Uh, but overall, you have deinterlacer there, 240p position adjustment, RGP color space. They have a lot of stuff going on here, and it is awesome. You can also see at the bottom, I can reset the Dreamcast from the controller and it works fine those were those extra cables that i soldered to the bottom of the board and it works great uh with paired with the gd emu uh you can pretty much get right back to the menu without having to touch the dreamcast and it is amazing so i'll actually do that when we finish up crazy taxi so you can see uh the the restart and everything but let's actually get in the crazy taxi and let's just play for a little bit and then we'll jump over to a few other games i also got tony hawk pro skater 2 because i love that game and it looks great on here too. Like it looks amazing. So I, I'm like super stoked about this modification. I mean, look how look look how bright and vibrant the game looks. You can see the kind of some of the aliasing stuff around the uh, the car and everything there. Like I'm saying, because it's we're not relying on uh, the blurriness, I guess, of a CRT to hide that. It's it's all there. Like the flaws and everything are there, but it just looks so bright and clean on the monitor. Oh, gotta get around there. Also, if you have not already, uh, down at the bottom, you want to set it to 60 frames per second. Um, this was still the early uh, the early 2000s, late 90s. We hadn't evolved to 30 frames per second yet. We're still working with 60 frames in a lot of our games. So you want to go ahead and uh, uh, add it to 60 so it looks correct. Like Dreamcast looks right. The gameplay. Um, but yeah, Crazy Taxi is a game that most people got. It, it looked great. It played amazing. And it was a game you could just pick up and play for a little bit. I would like to see them continue to move it to more systems. I know it was on the 360 because I had it in a in a, like a, one of those um, those arcade packs they put out. And I, I actually played it a lot on there too. It's just so much fun. I just love this game. And it just, it, it's playing on the Dreamcast natively and it looks amazing. So I am super happy about this modification. Just because I, I now have Crazy Taxi from the Dreamcast straight up playing like this in 1080p on my monitor is awesome. Yes, one of my favorite games now uh, looking better than ever on the Dreamcast. And she just went through the car, but that's all right because it's the Dreamcast. Uh, let me go ahead and let's actually go back to here. And I'm actually going to go ahead and reset it so I can show you what we do here. So X, and then I'm just going to do a regular reset with R. I'm go to black screen. And then it'll basically reboot back to the GD Emu screen, which you're going to hear see here in a second. So there's our Dreamcast logo. Still looking great, by the way, on here. <laughs> uh, and uh, Sega, and then it'll jump right in. And we'll be right back to be able to pick another game. So yes, I am very much liking the combination of the DC HDMI with the GD Emu. Jet Grind Radio? Let's do Jet Grind Radio. All right, so Jet Grind Radio, another classic I know it's it, people see it as Jet Set Radio and everything, but when we bought it here in the States, uh, back in the day, it was Jet Grind Radio, and that's how we knew it for the longest time until, of course, we had it on the original Xbox, and that was actually one of the games that got me to go over to the original Xbox was they got, what, Jet Set Radio Future, and it was it looked really cool on there, too. But but the interesting thing about this game, <clears throat> when, uh, when I started playing it with this modification, I noticed... That the game itself, like the character models, look like they have aliasing around them a lot. But, oh, get out of the way. Mm, I'm going to knock them out of the way. Uh, but, but the the text itself looks really good. Like, I don't know if the text is like vector and like just the character models are affected by the aliasing. But the text looks like super clear. Um, like between levels and everything where they kind of will try to tell you the story and everything. Oh, those are police. It, it looks really, really, really good. And uh, it's that's something that I, I noticed it right away as uh, massively benefiting from this modification. What is she doing? Get out of the way. Uh, so I that was a really cool thing to see. Uh, there we go. Got it. Love this game, by the way. There's another really, really good one. Uh, I think it's just because of the cell shading and everything. The colors, again pop massively off of this screen uh with this with this modification so i recommend checking out check iron radio if you have not uh, especially if you do this modification another really good one to uh to check out let's let's jump over to one of my favorite games though tony hawk pro skater 2 the thing about this is i understand it's a playstation 1 game right but something about it on the dreamcast i always maybe it's just because i thought the dreamcast was more powerful obviously it is but, like, I always had this feeling that it just looked better on the Dreamcast. And now seeing it through the HDMI modification, yeah, it does. It, it, it really shines this way. And I think this, and I guess, 
uh, Tony Hawk Pro Skater 2X on the Xbox. Probably the best looking games or the best looking ways you can play Tony Hawk Pro Skater 2. But like this right here looks awesome on my screen. Like I know I'm used to the PS1 version, which didn't look great. Uh, the N64 version, I guess, looked better as well. Uh, although, of course, there's always compression when it comes to the uh, the N64 version of a game compared to the PS1 version. But I just I always thought the Dreamcast version looked better. And with this HDMI modification, it really does. You still have kind of the aliasing around the character models, but like the ground textures and everything just look better. And I this is a cool way to play Tony Hawk Pro Skater 2, which is still one of my favorite games of all time. It's just it's an outstanding skateboarding game. And I know people like three, but when this first came out back. I mean, think about it. We were with the PS1 and the N64 at the time. This was like some next level stuff. And they got this done quick, too, from what I remember. It didn't take long for them to develop it. And for our last game, we're going to check out Soul Calibur. Because, of course, when this came out, this is in practice. When this came out, it was one of the best looking games I can remember at the time on the Dreamcast. It was like crazy how this game looked. And, of course, we're used to arcade. But this was like the arcade game right in front of us. It runs so smooth. It, it's a great great version of the game and it's in a home console and yes the the conversion for this hdmi modification it looks ridiculous like this i i can't believe this is on the dreamcast still looking at it this is a game that came out in 1999 and it looks this good so yes this this is one of the games that probably benefits i think the most from this hdmi modification um just because it's already a really fluid great looking obviously fighter and now you throw it in hdmi and it looks even clearer on the screen this is it this is the game to get for this uh for this modification pretty much every game looks just better like every game uh i cannot think of a game that looks that i've played uh that looks worse from this modification some of them of course look more uh like some of them get more jagged edges and stuff i noticed that in i think sonic sonic there's a lot of jagged edges uh but it just looks cleaner by a lot on your uh on your big screen and of course it formats it so that it looks better right away as we're seeing here i didn't have to do anything crazy to make it look this way i just said hey 1080p and i figured all of it out so yes it's an expensive mod but it's an awesome model at the same time it really is for enthusiasts or people who even want to stream dreamcast games this might be worth your money here. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is going to do it for the Ultimate Dreamcast video. I really like this system. It's awesome. It plays through SD cards if you want it to. It has HDMI out. It's very quiet because there's no disk drive in there anymore. And it's just an overall awesome system to have. Very, very reliable, obviously, since it's not reading from the disk. The disk drives in these things were kind of touch and go, so it's really cool to run it straight from an SD card. And they get that really nice 1080p picture out of my monitor, it looks great. So, should you get one? Well, it's up to you. Th these things, when you get them all done with the GD EMU and the HDMI plug and everything else, it costs hundreds of dollars. So maybe think about that, because now that I've made this thing and spent hundreds of dollars on it, Sega's gonna go ahead and probably announce a Dreamcast Mini, just because I already spent the money on this thing to make it mostly outdated and useless. So, hey, you're welcome.